Hello there, this is uh, Chandra Easton. I um, just thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about the um, annual solar eclipse that's coming up at the end of February, on the 26th of February this year, 2017. Um, in days gone by, uh, uh, the eclipses were used uh, to uh, foresee, to prophesy um, significant events that were going to impact the masses and uh, they have the same capacity even now. Most of us use the uh, internet to try and understand what's going on in the world or we look at the news uh, but as we're increasingly becoming aware uh, the internet's um, full of um, all kinds of information, some true and not true. The same could be too true for any of the talks that I give. I base the talks on um, my understanding of esoteric astrology and mundane astrology. And of course you're, you're welcome to um, consider what I have to say or not, agree or not. It's entirely up to you. Um, generally speaking, a solar eclipse uh, has a three-year impact. Uh, and it goes from the point of the eclipse, so in this case 26th of February 2017 uh, through um, for three years until late February 2020 and of course the date 2020 immediately brings to mind the um, targets for global warming that we've been attempting to set and attempting to bring down um, the destruction of our environment, the very planet that we live upon. Okay, so I'll use the, uh, the astrological chart. I'll use the path of Umbra, which is the physical space um, from which this eclipse can be seen. And I'll attempt to interpret that. Um, okay, uh, so the first thing to notice is that the eclipse falls in the ninth degree of Pisces, uh, along with Neptune, Vulcan, Chiron, Mercury and the South Node. So we have here one, two, three, four, five, six planets, if you include the Sun and the Moon, Vulcan many people aren't aware of, and Chiron planetoid. Whatever description you'd like to give for this conglomerate, uh, it's a stellium officially, there's a very large focus in the sign of Pisces. And the sign of Pisces on an um, environmental level refers to water and particularly um, large bodies of water uh, and in this case we're talking about the Atlantic Ocean, specifically the South Atlantic Ocean but it also refers to things like the polar caps, the North or the South polar cap and in this case we're talking about the Southern polar cap and the South Pacific Ocean. On another level uh, that amount of focus in Pisces is associated with a great amount of confusion um, globally on, on an emotional level, so people don't know where they stand, there's not a degree of security, the world's increasingly an insecure place to live. Uh, when you look at that amount of Pisces and think about it in terms of the exoteric, the worldly focus, or the esoteric, the spiritual focus, then it's clear that we're at a point of great um, parting of the ways um, as humanity effectively choose whether we want to live in peace and harmony with each other and the planet or not. And so there is literally a separating of um, our species. Uh, and the sign of Pisces has two fish, one facing forwards, one facing backwards. And each individual, each nation, each race is effectively choosing where we stand. Do we stand for the good of the whole or do we stand for um, our heads in the sand and what we can individually and personally gain? That's the question with this eclipse. Yes, the eclipses conjunct the south node. All solar eclipses are always conjunct the south node, so that's not of itself significant. But what is significant is the ninth degree of Pisces. Now, the Sabian symbols are um, metaf metaphors or symbols. Uh, there's 360 of them, one for each degree in, in a circle. And the ninth degree of Pisces is a symbol associated with the jockey um, entering a new phase of the race where everything becomes accelerated and literally spurs the horse on to greater endeavour. Now if you would examine that um, symbol 
and contemplate the jockey as being the soul and the horse being the personality, you could say that at the group soul of humanity, humanity's soul, is spurring us on to greater endeavour. And I would say this is associated with the care and protection of the earth and, and also the implementing of the targets, the Kyoto targets, the dropping the greenhouse gas um, effect all over the earth. So bringing in the green um, technologies and phasing out things like coal uh, is life or death. We have to be spurred on to even greater effort. As I said, all eclipses last three years. This is a, a mutable eclipse in the mutable sign or the changeable sign of Pisces, which simply means that there will be periods during um, the next three years where the ocean changes are dramatic and then they will appear to subside. Or there could be periods when the um, uh, melting of the southern polar cap is quite dramatic and then subsides. So there could be periods where humanity as a whole are overwhelmed by emotions and then that subsides. Okay, um, let me see what else there is in this chart that I'd like to talk about. Well, I notice Mercury is in Pisces and, and Mercury doesn't function very well in Pisces. The, the message gets muffled and confused and distorted and there are often, um, well, there's a lack of truth, a lack of clarity, often a lot of lies and you could say that that's what's happening with the world media. And so as never before, it's extremely important that we use our discrimination when we read anything or study anything or uh, begin to form an opinion. Look at things both sides and ask yourself, what is the hidden agenda um, of the person putting forward the message or this sto news story or whatever it is, the Facebook post, because um, otherwise we can be literally hoodwinked. Uh, now, the Vulcan in Pisces uh, sits on the midheaven with Vulcan on one side of the midheaven and Chiron a few degrees off the other side of the midheaven. Uh, so Vulcan-Chiron uh, conjunction to me looks like uh, volcanic activity. I would say at the bottom of the oceans are uh, 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 volcanoes, and I don't even know if there are any, but I would speculate that there are volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean in the South Pacific off the coast of South America that are going to have a devastating effect upon um, the Atlantic coast of South America. I've talked quite a lot about this in a previous um, talk in the Earth's Great Change and you might uh, go to my YouTube channel and have a look and, and you'll find that there uh, is a talk on South America and the Antarctic. There's also one on Central America. Um, there are other ones that are you may find interesting associated with um, the election of President Trump and also there's one on the water pre protectors of Standing Rock. Uh, they're previous um, YouTubes. But to come back to this chart, uh, uh, Vulcan and Chiron on the midheaven to me looks as if there will be um, dramatic consequences for the Atlantic coast and if I had to pick a place on the Atlantic coast I would say it would be Rio de Janeiro and the reason for this is that the planet Vulcan uh, when I take the map and I look at it through the astrocartography method Vulcan falls very close to um, Rio de Janeiro so you know it's, uh, it doesn't all go well for that area. The actual solar eclipse is within two degrees square of the Gemini ascendant uh, and so there's a lot of changeable circumstances over the next three years in that part of the world. There may be a disruption of communication, a disruption of media, uh, there may be a great amount of um, hurricanes and cyclones and uh, very changeable ocean situations off the coast of South America, off the Atlantic coast of South America. Yes, um, hmm, what else shall I talk about? Oh, there's three planets in Aries in this chart. Venus is in Aries uh, and so is Mars and Uranus. Now, Uranus has been in Aries for quite a while and um, you could say the urgency of the need for, for change all around the planet um, has been sitting there for several years. And of course we have, as part of this overwhelming change. We have the, the President-elect Trump has come into office, we have Brexit, we have all kinds of um, risings up. We wait to see what will be happening in France with the, the rise of the far-right party. We look at the Australian politics and the, the movement, sort of sliding movement towards the right. Um, 
they're just some of the things that are obvious in the mainstream media. But what's not been reported in the mainstream media as effectively is this groundswell movement of those individuals and groups and nations who are increasingly committing to uh, protecting the earth, protecting her water, her air, her resources. And, and many countries have, you know, are banning um, poisons and toxins in their water. And I think it's Bolivia, one of the countries of South America that has, that has um, recognised Gaia as an entity. So this recognition of the earth as having rights. And there are I think in America, a group of young people who are currently suing the American government uh, for the destruction of the ecosystem, therefore taking away their capacity to live in the future. So um, all kinds of wonderful, wonderful community collaborative actions. The the people gathering at um, Standing Rock to uh, resist the 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 push by the by the Trump administration to push through the uh, the pipeline. Uh, through their lands which will effectively poison their water and not only their water, water for 2,000 kilometres or 2,000 miles I think it is. Yeah, so There's a great amount of protection. So you could say that the battle for the hearts um, of people on earth has become focused upon the earth and her resources. So the best of the Mars Uranus is that it brings new leaders forward and it brings forward a, um, a fighting spirit and, and a resurgence of the, um, the, the, um, the way that uh, Gandhi effectively reclaimed India for his people is, is, is non-violence. So, so um, organised um, demonstrations, sometimes spontaneous de demonstrations of non-violence um, to stand up for the rights of dispossessed people. I think here of the people of the South Pacific and Kiribati who have lost their homes. Um, you know, more and more and more the um, global community is uniting to stand up for the earth. But unfortunately the Mars Uranus also has a, a very negative connotation and, and it's a very firebrand and a very warrior um, energy about it. And when it's used negatively then um, armies and governments, governments mobilise their armies in order to, to implement uh, practices that, that they want for their own gain and think here of what's gone on with the push and the greed for the resources in the Middle East and how destroyed Syria has been and again I, I think about the Australian environment and the, the, the greed of um, uh, certain corporations and indeed I'd have to say the Australian government that's put, put at risk um, our continent and, and, and the reef and the coal seam gas that's happening uh, that the mining, the mining, and the disregard for the earth and the sanctity of the earth and the protection of the environment. So this rabid greed um, and the selling off to the highest bidder of the land and the resources and the earth. Uh, this is equally the Mars Uranus conjunction in Aries. So we have both sides of the um, equation, you might say: those who who seek to protect the earth and those who seek to exploit for gain. And the Mars Uranus in this chart is very strong. It's it's combust. And when I look at the astro cartography map, what I notice is that this Mars Uranus line goes straight through Mexico. Now I know that there's a very large um, volcano. It's, it's got a long name. It starts with a P. I couldn't even begin to pronounce it. But when I look at this chart and I notice the proximity to Mexico, I immediately think of this most volatile. Um, volcano and the dangers of, of it simply erupting and causing mayhem in Central America as a result of um, of this Mars Uranus conjunction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I just think that's probably all I'll say about this chart um, is that even though nobody actually lives in this remote part of South America or very of, of the South Atlantic Ocean off the coast of South America, not very many people would live down there. The chart, we're all connected and the chart connects all of us. If we don't have the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole in place, then, then life on Earth becomes way, way, way beyond challenging. 
Yeah, Jupiter is in Libra in this chart, so the, the call really is for us to act with goodwill and to act, think globally and act locally. And you could say that the message of think globally, act locally is held in the North Node and the Earth, which is in the 8th degree of Virgo. I'm going to just look that up and see what the symbol is for that. Just one second. Okay, so the Sabian symbol, this is from the book, the Sabian symbols by Dr. Mark Edmund Jones. Brilliant, brilliant book. And I'm looking at the symbol for the ninth degree of Virgo. This is because we always use the next whole degree. So the resolution point, or one of the resolution points in this chart, says a man making a futuristic drawing. That brings to me, to mind, to me the the need that we need to re, we need to have hope and faith and vision our future, because that's the only way we'll get to a future is if we vision our future. I'm going to quickly look up the North Node, which is in the fourth whole degree of Virgo, and the symbol. And again, this is a destiny point or a resolution point to this um, solar eclipse charm. It says a coloured child playing with white children. You couldn't get a better symbol for that than, than um, the message to sort of compassionately enter into life with people from all colours and backgrounds and traditions. And of course, the, the south node which is, if you like, the past history that's led to this solar eclipse. The image for that is heavy traffic on a narrow isthmus. Yeah, so we certainly have too much heavy traffic on Earth that has caused this um, great difficulties. We don't have enough resources to go around. Um, other things I could say, but Pluto sits in the 8th house. You know, Pluto's the, the, the planet of transformation and it's in the house of transformation in the sign of governments. So we have the, I would say, the end of um, the uh, United States of North America and now we've entered into a period where the states of North America are divided. And if I look at the astrocartography chart, uh, the Mars Uranus line that governs the upheaval and the the sort of the the warrior energy it goes through um, Central America it goes through Mexico uh, Trump of course has um, threatened a war with Mexico and a uh, trade war and it goes up through the heartland where a lot of the conservative people who are doing it really really tough and who are hoping for change and for positive change where they live and it goes straight up into Canada um, and crosses this area where the um, uh, you know the the, the the dash and the search and the hope for oil at the expense of people who live in those regions, not just the people at Standing Rock. And of course saying that I'd have to um, revisit and mention again the, um, the fact that South, the, the South, the Southern Antarctic um, land mass uh, will be opened up for um, exploration, resource exploration to all countries. I think it's in three or four years time in a very short space of time. There's been a, um, I think maybe it's a hundred year sort of blockade or